Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? It is currently, let's see what time it is, 3.36 p.m. And let's see what the temperature is. It was 45 degrees in Alex's car when we were on our way home. It is currently, do you guys hear that bird? Okay, that bird, I don't know why, always reminds me of Sundays. <laughs> is it an owl? I don't know what that, that bird is. Does anybody know what that bird is? It's 46 degrees and sunny. That bird that goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. It'll do it here in a second. I'll, I'll shut my mouth so you guys can hear it. It's so pretty. I don't know why that bird reminds me of Sundays, but when I was a little kid, I remember hearing that sound, like, you know, when we would be eating dinner or whatever, my mom would have, like, the windows cranked open and we'd be eating dinner and stuff like that. I can remember hearing that bird. So, okay, can we all say, here it is. Well, now there's a car coming down the street, so you can't hear it. A loud car at that. A truck, a pickup truck. They're moving some, oh, somebody's moving into our neighborhood today. So, um, can we all say this together? I wasn't. Do you know how I'm going to finish this? I wasn't going... I w All together now. I wasn't going to vlog today. Do you hear that bird? That bird. I don't know what that is. Is that an, is it an owl? I know it's not a pigeon. I don't know what it is. But anyway, that bird always reminds me of Sundays for some reason. It's so pretty, isn't it? So, yeah. I wasn't going to vlog today. In fact, I posted this thing on Instagram last night, <laughs> more as a reminder to myself than anything else. Let's review my Instagram stories for the last uh, 24 hours. And, oh, let's look at my uh, my brother-in-law's Instagram since he just posted something on here. Hold on a second. What did he just post? Oh, they're skiing. They're in Snowbird right now. And this is the ski lodge that they're at. I think they got an Airbnb actually, so this must be like the ski lodge where they're skiing at. And this is the mountain. Oh, hold on a second. <clears throat> and then, look at that. The sun coming up over the mountain. They are like, my brother and sister-in-law are big snowboarders. Oh, here he is. Out here doing some moves on the dance thing. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but my brother-in-law, let's see if he has a picture up on his Instagram. I'm sure he does. He proposed to, Fufu proposed to Jesse. Where is it at? And he's got to have the pictures on here somewhere. He proposed to Jesse on top of a mountain skiing. Well, if he doesn't have... I know he has it on here. Why can't I find it? Um, hold on a second. Let's see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Oh, here it is. So here's my brother-in-law proposing to my sister-in-law, Jessie, on top of the mountain. Because they love to ski so much. That was in Big Sky, Montana. Is where he proposed to her. Isn't that so cool? So anyway, yeah. I wasn't going to... Oh, I was looking at my Instagram. I wasn't going to um, vlog today. Here are all my beautiful pictures. This, I love this picture. I posted that on Instagram last night. I, I just, like, reshare, like, artwork that I like. And then this one, I don't know, these like pictures that remind me of winter. And then I post this little thing and it says, having one lazy day per week can help reduce stress, high blood pressure, and improve mental health. But I don't necessarily like, when I'm filming like five and six videos <clears throat> in a row in a day, um, it kind of feels like I'm actually like doing a lot. But like just sitting down like talking to you guys on a vlog, that doesn't seem like, it doesn't, feel stressful or anything well none of it feels stressful honestly because I just like love making videos you know but we um I got a really good night's sleep last night I got like eight and a half hours of sleep maybe nine and we went to brunch and we came home and I took a little Boo Radley out and it's so nice and so last night late last night I was like okay I posted that as a reminder to myself and I was like you're gonna take tomorrow off and you're not gonna walk you're not gonna do anything and just relax and just lay, you know, in the couch or on the chair and just watch shows all day long. Well, I got home from um, brunch today and I took a little Boo Radley out and it's 45 but it's like really sunny and it's really nice. And I'm just like, I just want to, I kind of wanted to sit out here and just listen to my audiobook a little bit. And then that led into, like as I was walking, because my legs really hurt last night from walking, but I'll talk about that in just a second. 
and um, I was like, so that was one of the reasons why I was like, I'm gonna take a day off from walking. And then I got home and I was like, my legs don't hurt too bad today and I wanna listen to my audiobook. So I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna sit down and vlog for a little bit. Even though I know everybody's watching the Super Bowl today, it's okay, there's a lot of people out there that probably aren't, <laughs> like me. So I was like, I'm gonna vlog for a little bit. It's still early, I mean, it's only 3.30 something, right? And I'm gonna vlog for a little bit and then I think I'm gonna take like a walk, Min like half an hour minimum, maximum. I'm not, I'm not planning, if I, if I walk longer than that, that's great. But if I don't, that's great too. I'm not gonna like push myself today. I'm just gonna walk as long as I want to walk and just kind of enjoy it today. Um, I mean, I enjoy it every day, but like just kind of, I, I usually walk pretty fast. I'm going to just do like a leisurely walk today and just kind of like really enjoy it and listen to my audiobook and stuff. So, and then when I come back, um, I take a little bit of a nap and then I'm going to get up and I'm going to, I need to trim my beard and shave around here and stuff. I'm going to do all that and then sit down and watch some shows tonight. I don't, we are completely caught up on all of our shows. Um, before I get into this though, and I am going to read some comments if I have enough time at the end or if I remember at the end, I'm going to read some comments because I meant to do that the other day and I haven't done it. But I was um, reading through some of the comments. I had talked in the other day about when I was talking about like my uh, weight loss stuff. By the way, my coffee today is banana nut and it is so delicious and I brought it home. I did put one... Um, artificial sweetener in it. I don't think actually this one has it. Does it? I don't remember. I, when we were sitting there, I put one in my coffee cup there. But I don't know if bringing it home I did or not. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, so um, I was talking about like my weight loss journey and stuff. And one of the reasons why I've started to kind of like talk a little bit more about it over here is because for me, I don't want to do videos like daily update videos on my Peter Dust stuff channel. And it is a level of accountability for me to talk about it over here. Um, and so, and, and, and a couple people also that have like watched my channel for a long time were like, Peter hasn't mentioned anything about it on the vlog. He must not have been doing very well. And so I think for me to kind of like share with you guys, like last night I did not do well at all, or last night I did fantastic or whatever, I think might be a little bit of a level of accountability that would help me a little bit. So I think I'm going to share just every day a little bit of what's going on with my like weight loss journey and trying to be healthy and stuff like that. So I think it was yesterday in yesterday's video that I was talking about how I got it was either yesterday or the day before I was talking about how I got the comment. I want to say this before I even get into my vlog that I had gotten a comment on my Peter does stuff video. Um, about eating in moderation. Okay. And that, um, and that I, I responded to it, and I don't even remember how I responded to it. I do remember that, like, I had some kind of emotional reaction to it because I was like, I'm an addict, I don't do anything in moderation, blah, 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 whatever, right? Well, there were, like, two people in the vlog that commented on it, and they said, like, one person was like, oh, you were offended by my comment. I want you to know that was not your comment that you left. I actually went back just now, and I looked, and the comment that was originally put up there is no longer on the video. They must have deleted the comments. I haven't deleted a comment off of one of my videos, and I don't even know how long. I mean, it's probably been... It's been a very long time, like to the point where I can't even remember the last comment that I deleted or the last person that I blocked on one of my, on any of my channels. So I didn't delete the comment, but the comment is no longer there. It wasn't your comment because your comment is still there. I saw your comment. Um, and the other person that was like, oh, I left a comment about moderation to your comments, like still there or, you know, on my vlog or whatever. So it's neither one of you. The comment that I got... I don't know if I need to start like maybe like referencing who the person is. Like I don't want to call anybody out because I'm always like, I know this is going to sound stupid, but like I'm always like trying to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. And I know that sometimes like, you know, it's like when, when you text somebody, it comes across differently than if you're saying it to them in person or on the phone, which is why I'm not like, I, I one of our early rules when we got into marriage counseling was like no discussions or arguments over texting. Like they have to be in person, right? That really saved us a lot because back in the day, like in the early parts of our relationship, we would have disagreements through text messaging, but it, a lot was lost in translation. So I try to give the benefit of the doubt to the person that's leaving the text or leaving the comment. Like maybe they just don't know what it sounds like when you're reading it. Maybe they just don't hear the tone. 
of how they're saying it. I'm somebody that, like, my tone doesn't always come across as great well as well, you know, that I've really worked on the last couple years, and so I try to get the benefit of the doubt. But this comment about moderation, it just, it wasn't just like, hey, Peter, like, have you ever thought about, like, eating in moderation? It wasn't that. I would not take offense to that. I don't take offense to people when they're like, like, hey, have you ever thought about trying keto? Or like, hey, count calories? Or I don't take any offense to that. It's overwhelming at times, but even now, like, going into this and doing this on my Peter Does Stuff channel, like I said the other day, I have to be open to that's going to come along with it. Like, that's going to come along with the territory. Like, if I'm going to talk about my weight loss journey, like, people are going to share suggestions or say, you're not doing this right or whatever, try this or whatever. Like, that's part of it, right? But it's all kind of, like, in the language that you use. I had actually received quite a few comments from people that were saying things, and I think this is where, like, people thought I was talking about them and I wasn't. So, if you think I'm talking about you, go in and see if there's other comments that are similar to yours, because I actually got several comments about moderation on that video and the previous video and previous vlogs that I've talked about where people are like, hey, you should just like, you know, try to eat in moderation or whatever. And I understand like from a non-addict point of view how that makes a lot of sense. I don't take any offense to that because somebody left a comment and they were like, you are so obviously offended by my comment that I'm not going to comment on your videos anymore. Um, which if that's what you feel like you need to do, I understand that. But like, it wasn't your comment. I'm just going to tell you that. Um, and so... The comment that I was talking about was, the person was nasty about it. I should have just read the comment. I guess I don't need to call the person out and say him by name, but I guess I could just read the comment from now on that, like, that I have some feeling about. Because the comment was very much like this. I, I don't I would read it to you, because that's why I went back in to look at it. And also to see if it was one of these people that felt like it was about them. The comment was very much like, Peter, you have no clue what you're doing. You need to just do this in moderation. Why can't you do this in moderation? Like, do you not have any control over what you put in your own body? Do you not have any control over what you're putting in your mouth? It's all about moderation. It was a rude comment, okay? It was very rude. I was actually nicer responding to it than how the comment was. So it wasn't you guys. I don't have a problem with people being like, oh, try keto, try Atkins, try Weight Watchers, or like, you know, do calorie. I mean, so many people are leaving comments, and some of them I look into to see, like, if they're things that I think I want to try for me, and some of them I'm just like, no, I've done that, or I'm not interested in that, or whatever. I welcome those suggestions today. It's not overwhelming to me. I've kind of, like, worked past that. In all honesty... Before I decided to put this online, I was like, if I'm going to put this online, you're going to have to be open to it, okay? You're not going to be able to put this online and then say, okay, I don't want any comments about it, right? Like, if you're going to put this online that you're doing this weight loss journey, you're going you're gonna to open yourself up to 100 people that have done weight loss journeys or doing one currently or what their experiences are. So I was totally ready for that. Like, I'm not, it doesn't feel as overwhelming to me as it, maybe this changes day to day. I don't know. Maybe I said something in my other video but but that's kind of where I'm at today I don't I welcome the comments so leave the comments my favorite neighbors coming by well hi favorite neighbors hey, Peter. The sun back. you almost ran me over last night when I was walking I didn't even realize it was you because you. you didn't even know I was off my front porch did you <laughs> I, thought, I don't even know where I'm where I that's I why I walk with the cars coming towards me that way I can see them well, I saw that there was another car coming, and then, and I was all into my audiobook listening to it, and then I saw you, and then you were like smiling and waving, and I was like, oh! <laughs> it's beautiful today, though, isn't it? Yeah, me too. Are you guys watching the Super Bowl? Oh, yeah. What time does it start? 6.30. Oh, that's late, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they gotta take care of the West Coast. Oh, gotcha. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Who's playing this year? Kansas City? And San Francisco. And San Francisco. Is it the 49ers? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I knew that. That was big for me. <laughs> I know tennis. That's all I know. I know he's in charge of the tennis league around here. Well, if you need another one, let me know next summer. Oh, yeah. I need to get my, my butt up off this uh, chair and be at, that's why I'm walking every day now. This is my fifth day I'm going to walk today. There you go. I know. This is, a, this is a good name, not just here, but outside. Well, I was telling people that, like, there's so many neighborhoods here, you can walk like four or five miles and just, and go in and out, and in and out, in and out. 
Yeah. No, and it's real safe and stuff too. What? Well, I mean, it's been a while. Oh, I mean, I have no idea. I played all, I, yeah, I was trained to be a professional tennis player. So I went to camps and, you know, had private coaches and that growing up and all that, played high school and all that kind of stuff. You and I might need to play a couple games, just you and I, to get me warmed up. And then I could probably, you know. I was going to do pickleball with him, too, but he said it's completely different than tennis, so. Yes. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Okay, yeah, we'll keep that in mind. I know, I can't wait for tennis weather. Pool weather, that's what I'm ready for, the pool weather. <laughs> Have a good one. They're so sweet. Maybe I'll be in the tennis league in the neighborhood. That would be fun. There's like a group of guys in here. I think I talked about this last year because my neighbor in the corner and then that guy are the only two from the neighborhood in here. And then it's like a bunch of like retired like attorneys and stuff like that. But... They do like, a, they have like a league that they run in here. The HOA people were going crazy because like none of the people that live in here are supposed to play tennis on these courts. And so they were like, why don't they, remember I talked about this, they could all just donate their money and then that could do all kind of stuff. But um, that'd be kind of fun to be in like one of, it's during the day, it's like from four to five or something like that. I remember my neighbor in the corner doing it. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, about the comments. So it wasn't either one of you guys. Trust me, if it's just like a random comment of somebody like, hey, Peter, have you ever thought about, I actually read your comment, the person that said that they were never going to comment on my videos again, and it was a really nice comment. It really was. So I'm sorry that you felt like I was offended by it. It wasn't your comment at all. So from now on, what I'll do is if I'm really offended by a comment and I feel like I need to respond to it, like, and I wasn't even, to be honest with you, I wasn't that offended by the comment. It was that, it just is a ridiculous thought to me, you know, that like, if moderation worked, I wouldn't be sitting here doing a series called Weight Loss Journey. If moderation worked that well for me, you know what I mean? It was just kind of like ridiculous to me to even think that way. But I wasn't really even that offended by it. I just was like, whatever. I was more offended by the tone of the comment. I think sometimes, like, there's a couple people, in all honesty, that, like, comment on a lot of my videos that have for, I mean, four and five years. And I know that they are... Um, you know, like people that are like, that they like watching my videos and they've been very supportive of me and even sent me DMs and stuff like that. And I can tell that how they speak does not translate to how they comment. I know that, you know, because other people will like reach out to me and say, did you see this is like a rude comment? And I'll be like, they're not, they don't mean it that way. Like I've even said this to people that have reached out to me and been like, have you seen this rude comment? And I'm like, they don't mean it that way. Like I know them, like they've like followed me for years. They're very nice, like whatever. Like it's not rude. It's just how it translates. Because a lot of us, like I don't translate right through text messages and stuff like that, which is why I use LOL constantly <laughs> because I just don't, you know, it's, I, I, I I don't translate well through, like, text messages and stuff like that, which is also why, like, I do complete sentences with periods and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Because I, like, want my text to come, like, that's why, if, if you know me in real life, if we're texting and it goes past about three texts, I pick up the phone and call you. Because I'm like, I can't do this texting stuff. We're having a conversation now, and the conversation needs to be on the phone, not, like, through texting, right? So... <clears throat> but I don't want anybody to feel like I was, like, offended by a comment. I, in all honesty, in 2024, the way that I'm responding to that, like, okay, I shouldn't say that if I feel like I'm offended by a comment, I'll read it online and respond to it. I'm kind of done, to be honest with you, doing all that. Like, at least for today, I am, or right now in my life. Like, I did a lot of that in 2023. I'm not, that's not where I'm at today. Um, at this point where I'm at with it is if somebody is, and I wouldn't even say offended by a comment, if somebody's comment is threatening or cruel or derogatory, I'm just going to block that person. It's not even going to be about deleting their comment. It's going to be about blocking them. And I've made that very clear. And in all honesty, in the last six weeks, I haven't felt the need to do that at all, you know? Um, so... It wasn't that I was like, it takes a lot to offend me in a comment, in all honesty. And I don't really get that many offensive comments. I really don't, you know? But I also kind of made it a goal of going into 2024, being focused on the positive and being focused on the people that, because there's so, I mean, 99% of the people that watch my videos are so supportive and kind and compassionate, right? It's like, I've said this for years with other people and I need to like walk the walk and give that my attention. And so that's what I'm trying to do this year and not focus, you know, like on the negative and whatever. I know the negatives out there. I see it and things like that, you know, whatever. But um, no, like, 
if it's a if it's a truly offensive comment, then I'll just like block that person. I I don't play games with that kind of stuff. But I haven't even felt like I needed to do that. So. But anyway, yeah. So anyway, no. I mean, I'm not dealing a bunch of the address and the negativity and the negative comments and all that kind of stuff. And people ask me, they're like, are you still addressing things behind the scenes? Yes, I'm absolutely still dealing with things behind the scenes. It slowed down a little bit. Um, and, uh, but it's still being dealt with and I'm still figuring out how to pursue that. But I also don't want it to consume me, and I feel like there was a period of my life where it was kind of consuming me. The negativity was consuming me, and I feel like, in all honesty, it was kind of a di distraction. Not really a deflection, but maybe even that too, but a distraction from, like, me really struggling um, with, like, my mental health and, like, just my emotions and my feelings and reaction to the accident and things like that that I had really never dealt with before. And so, you know, and going into 2024 and trying to, like, address this, even before, like, I started talking about, like, my feelings and my emotions and stuff, I had already decided I'm not, I'm not focusing on this. You know, people do not come here to hear me yell and scream and talk about people that don't like me. There's no reason to continue to focus on that, you know? It's like, I'm... If people come here because they like me, then I'm going to give them my likable self. I'm not going to sit here and go off about people that don't like me. There's no reason to focus on that, you know, when there's enough people out there that do like you. As a person in recovery, like, there's a saying in recovery that's like, if there's 100 people in a room and one person says something negative about you, the addict or alcoholic will focus on that one negative thing. And I have to say, there's never been a truer statement about myself. And I think that that doesn't just go to me being an alcoholic or an addict. It also goes to me having been so bullied when I was growing up. But that being, and, and just seeking that acceptance from people that did not like me. I mean, when you talk about bullying, you know, it's not just about the fact that somebody's mean to you or cruel to you or whatever, right? It's then what I did with it afterwards. You know, a lot of like doing inventory and recovery is looking at how, how do we act after something happened. And for me, so much of like the bullying that happened wasn't just the action of somebody being cruel to me. It was what did I do afterwards? And what I did with it afterwards was I really sought the attention and the validation from the people that were the meanest to me. Because I thought if I can get them to like me, then I'm okay, right? Like, I'm not those things that they say about me. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not this worthless thing they think that I am. If I can get them to like me, right? Like, I, that was ingrained in my head from somewhere. And so, I think, like, I've carried that into my adulthood, in all honesty. And, and really, like, having gone through, like, my standing up for myself era, which is just where I'm standing up for myself, and I'm going to continue to do that from time to time when I feel the need to, Right? But part of me needing to stand up for myself or just standing up for myself is also doing it in a calm, peaceful way that, you know, like, I'm not letting people rent space in my head for free anymore. I'm just not doing it, okay? There are going to be people out there that don't like me. There's going to be people out there that hate me. I get it, right? Hate me if you have to. I understand that. Do you, okay? I don't have to suffer at your expense of not liking me. And I'm not going to, you know? Um, and that's something that I've had to work through. And that's a healthy place for me to get to. And so, um, I'm no longer seeking the validation, the acceptance from people that don't like me because you know what? They're not going to like me. And there's something I can do to change that. Um, I'd rather focus my attention on the people that do like me, you know? Wouldn't you in life, you know? Do you want to give all your attention? Like, if you take it offline, right, in your personal life, when I, like, walk in this jacket, I put, like, my keys and, like, my stuff in here and then my glasses. I put, do I have my glasses in here? Then my glasses in this other pocket in case I need my glasses while I'm walking. So Alex yesterday, he was like on his way home while I was walking from the saying, and he texted me and he was like, do you want me, I'm, I'm almost home, do you want me to pick you up? I'm like, <laughs> I'd pull up my glasses so I can read while I'm like walking like this. I'm like, N no, I appreciate it, but I'm like walking, I'm walking, right? Like I'm not like walking home from the store, like I'm walking to be healthy, but it was so sweet. Like, he was like, well, I just wanted to know if you wanted a ride. I thought it was so sweet. But anyway, um, yeah, so, uh. Enough said about that. Enough tension given to that. So that's just kind of where I'm at today. Focus on the beautiful. Focus on the positive. You know, I think that me living in the moment. Um, I did this Peterisms video and I made a comment on there about my mom. I was talking about grief on it. I'm going to have to go, go in here and pull this comment off really quick. Hold on a second. 
But it was something about grief and about my mom not being here and her not coming back. And somebody responded to it. I was actually going to do a whole video about this, but, um... Oh, here it was. They put in quotations. This is something I said. I miss my mom, but I also know she's not coming back. That got me. I lost my mom almost 12 years ago, and it's something I know, but maybe it's something that I ignore. I don't know. So thank you, Peter, is what they said. And, you know, I, I know that about about my mom, you know? Like, I know that about everybody in my life. Um, I think the hardest thing for me... I think the hardest thing of working through the accident is realizing I can't change that it happened. And, and I think this is probably why two years, because I can remember like at first, like talking to the doctors with my back and things like that, you know, and they really thought I would be like in a back brace for like a year and whatever. And I can remember like this doctor would say things like, well, the brain bleed should be cleared up by like two years, two years, two years. I was hearing all this two year stuff. Right. And I think for some reason that like triggered in my head and now it's like, my body is physically healed and whatever, but like, I'm not allowing myself to move on. And at some point, what I have to realize is I can't change, I can't change what happened. Um, I wish I could. As much as I wish, I can't change it and I know that. Just like I know that my mom is not coming back, you know, she's passed on, she's not coming back. And so then I have the choice to ask myself, what do I want to do going forward, right? Do I want to stay stuck in this feeling of guilt and shame for the rest of my life? Or do at some point I have to say, okay, you, you are living, you have to go on and you have to live your life, right? Like you have to do that. And I think that's part of, I've been so stuck, kind of in traction, you know, for the last two years that I know that and I know that the time has come for me to step into this new life and just be like, you, you can't feel guilty and ashamed forever. Like, you can't, right? Like, it's not healthy. Um, You know, I don't know. It's hard. Like, there's a lot of th things in my head that I don't really want to say, on, to be honest with you, on video. But, like, a lot of things that my therapist has asked me and other people. It's like, at some point, you know, you have to, like, you have to go on and live your life. No matter what happened, right? Like, um, and I, I think that time has come. And I think I'm kind of scared of that a little bit, you know? I think to a lot of people, it probably online, it probably seems like I have. Um... But, like, every trip that we take hits different. Every, you know, grocery store hits different. Every family, everything hits different. It, it just, it feels finite. And, like, I'm always thinking of it as, like, the last. And I can't continue to live like that, right? And so, you know, it was interesting that that person responded to that comment. It's like, I say this about my mom. You know, it's like... My mom's not coming back. I know that. You know, it's going to be 16 years in May. My mom would not want me to continue to sit here and live and be like, oh my God, I miss my mom. I miss my mom. Of course I miss my mom. I'm going to always miss my mom. Parts of my mom I'm going to always miss, right? But like, I think I was saying in that video that like my grieving is so different today than it was 16 years ago or 14 years ago or 12 years ago. Like, I don't, there are whole days that go by where I really don't think about my mom anymore, you know? Unless like... I smell something or like, you know, we live in the house that my mom lived in, but it looks so different than when she lived here, you know? Like, even like the Oscars this year, like thinking about watching the Oscars, like, I don't, like, it's kind of like more now my memory of doing the Oscars and, and watching them all than it is like my memory with my mom, even though I continue to tell that story, if that makes sense. Like, um, so... I know if my mom was standing in front of me, and I know this, like, I know I know my mom well enough to know this, that what my mom would say to me is, you, like, I don't want you to continue even, like, past four or five years, you know, or whatever, two or years, you know, to stay stuck in this grief for me that you're unable to get out of it and enjoy your life because you deserve 
to have a life. You know, I had a life, you deserve to have a life. Just because I'm not here anymore doesn't mean that I want you to continue to suffer. And every day wake up. And then I also was saying that I feel like when you're grieving the loss of something, you almost feel like moving on is a betrayal. It's like a forgetting, right? Like, if I move on, if I allow myself to have my life, then it's a the camera stopped. What I was saying was that like, if you allow yourself to move on or move through the pain and continue to live your life, then it's almost a betrayal for the person that left their, that lost their life, you know, or was left behind, whether, you know, whatever the circumstances is, you know? Um, and then it's like, um, you know, it's like, It's a fine line I feel like I walk with allowing myself to just have, to be like, you're still here. Go live the most fucking amazing life ever, right? And then also, at the same time, being like, you don't deserve to be here. And having full guilt and shame. Like, that is the line that I walk every single day, you know? And, um, I didn't think I was going to get into this in this vlog at all today. But that's a lot of what I'm working on in therapy right now, these emotions and these feelings that I have, you know? And I think that's partly why, like, the two-year anniversary, because, like, at first I can just remember, like, sitting in doctor's offices, and it was just, like, two years, two years, two years. I just, like, constantly was hearing all this stuff about two years, and at, like, two years things should be, like, back to normal physically, and at two years this, and at two years that, you know? And, um... You know, it's interesting because I shared in my, uh, I'm just going to start talking about this more if I feel like I need to, but um, I shared on my Peter Does Stuff channel about the fact that I've chosen not to drive. Um, and I even said in there something to the effect, to the effect of like, like, I was reading through the trauma narrative that I'm doing with my therapist, right? The questions that are on there. And one of the questions is like, what are things that are triggering to you? And I said, one of the things that's triggering to me is when people ask me questions. And I know that you guys don't. Like, this is not an offensive. Like, I'm not saying that. Like, this is nothing that I would be upset at. I mean, it doesn't upset me that you leave the comment. It just is triggering for me, if that makes sense. Um... I don't know if, how to make sense. I'm not upset with you for leaving the comment. It's just triggering to me when I hear the comment, if that makes sense. But when people are like, I miss the old vlogs and blah, 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 whatever. Or like, And to be honest, even when people are like, like you could just like sit. In, I mean, I've had friends of mine say this to me. So it's nothing with you. And they're like, you could just like sit in the driveway and turn on Alex's car. Like, I mean, first of all, can you even imagine the backlash online that I would get from that? Peter's in a car again. Like when he said he wouldn't. I mean, like that would be flooded all over, right? And then it's like, I don't, why, I, how is a chair sitting here on my front porch any different than sitting in a car in the driveway? Because I know that people love the driveway vlogs. I love doing them. They were fun, right? But, you know, like, when people are like, I miss the driving vlogs, I miss the driving vlogs. I'm not, I, I don't ever plan to be in a car driving again, you know? And I've just recently started coming out and talking about that. But that's a decision that I made quite some time ago. Um... It's not anything that has anything to do with doctor's approval or not. In fact, a very long time ago, I stopped talking to doctors about... I don't even know, like... I haven't had that conversation with my doctors in so long that I don't even know, like, if, like, I'm approved to drive by my doctors or not. I can remember the last time that I talked to them, they said it would, you know, we had to reevaluate it. And we never really reevaluated it because I came to my doctors the last time that we had the conversation. And I said, before we even get into this, you know, I made a decision. And the decision is that I, I'm choosing not to ever drive again. And my doctors were even surprised. And they, and I can remember I, I used the word forever. And I'll never forget my doctor said to me, forever is a really long time. And he said, you know, at some point you might want to change your mind. And I said, okay, right now, I'm making the decision not to drive. Um, and, you know, I, got, I shared how I felt about it on my video. And somebody left this comment and they said, you're punishing yourself. No, I'm not punishing myself. I actually feel really good about this choice, right? You know, there's not a lot that I can do to give back to the people that were hurt. But the one thing that I can do is, rest assured, no, they know I will never be back in a car driving again. They know that, right? You know? And then it was like people were trying to be nice and they were leaving comments like, have you ever thought about getting like a Tesla, like a self? People always say that to me. It's not just on online. People in my personal life have thought, have you ever thought about getting a Tesla? It's not about that, okay? It's about... It's conversations mostly that I had with Alex and Tanya. You know? And 
ways. I can remember when I was making amends, you know, in early recovery. And, um, people that had passed away and things like that that I wasn't able to make direct amends to. And my sponsor and I coming up with ways at that time for me to make amends by, you know, doing like service work or doing this or doing that to like pay back amends to those people in certain ways. Um, so, okay, we're going to get into the weeds today a little bit. So at the time that um, I had my accident, you guys can look this up. I don't, I don't know anything about it, right? Um, but at the time that I had my accident, I mean, I, I don't, I know some about it. I don't know much about it. But there was somebody in Indianapolis that um, had had like a seizure while they were driving, and like hurt somebody, and were told that they couldn't drive, chose to get back in a car. They did this like four times within the matter of like two or three years and ended up, um, a doctor died in an accident and, or something like that. And I can remember hearing that story like right after the accident. And I don't have like a fear of driving. I don't have a desire to drive, but what I do feel like is I can't go back and change that day. I can't go back and rectify that day. But what I can do is I can sure as shit make sure it never happens again. Because I can have a seizure sitting right here on my front porch and I'm not going to hurt anybody. I can have a seizure at the mall. I can have a seizure, you know, whatever. I'm not going to hurt anybody. Um, I know it's hard for people to understand what a breakthrough seizure is, but you can look it up. You can Google search it. Actually, they're more common than people know that people just that have never been diagnosed with epilepsy have breakthrough seizures um, out of the blue sometimes. I had two of them that day. The tripod fell all the way down. But what I was saying was that, okay, at the same time that, you know, well, right after the accident, when I heard about this person that had had multiple seizures and multiple car accidents and things like that. And I thought it was already kind of in my head, you know, and, and I thought, well, the one thing that I can do is I, I can't go back and change it. I can't go back, you know, but I can, I can make sure that I never get in a car and drive again. Like that's the one thing that I can do, you know? And, um, it was also interesting because I got a lot of comments on that video where I was talking about it and people were like, well, I've never had a driver's license and it's not hard for me and, and I'm never this and I'm never that. I don't, I think they kind of missed the point a little bit of like what I was saying was it wasn't about the difficulty of me um, getting around or driving. It's not difficult at all. I mean, obviously it's in the era of Ubers and the people that I have to come pick me up and I can tell you I'm at this point, very well trained on, you know, ordering food or Instacarting groceries. And I make sure when I go to the grocery store, I have everything that I need, you know, for the next two, three weeks, actually, you know, and we always have six weeks of dog food stored and things like that. You know, like I'm, I'm very, like I've become very well organized with making sure that at any given time I have everything here that I could possibly need for the next month, you know? Um, it's not about that. It's about the fact that I felt like this is one thing that, this is one action that I could do, you know? And it's actually, and like when this person said to me, um, and I, and I, like I said, I didn't feel offended by this comment either. I just felt like they didn't get it when they said that they felt like I was punishing myself by not allowing myself to drive to be in all honesty. Um, well, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to say it. Um, It's not punishing myself. It's trying to do to to do the right thing. It's trying to do. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like okay, for twenty some years of my life as a person in recovery, 
I tried to do the right thing every single day so that someone wasn't harmed. And then in sobriety, someone's harmed. So I had to think past that and be like, what can I do? You know, and I, and I think like hearing the story of this person that had had like multiple accidents and somebody had died and somebody was hurt. I mean, and, and somebody had died after they had had multiple accidents. And I thought, no, there's no reason for me ever to do that again. I don't have to. It's not me punishing myself. It's me trying to do something right. Well, where's my Valentine's then? I was just telling her I missed seeing you at the pool. Hey, listen, we only got like two months. That's my uh, neighbor in the corner. That's her friend. She's giving me back my book yesterday. But she brought her something for Valentine's Day, she said. And she's like, you have good ears. But anyway, we used to always go to the pool um, in the summer. So, I don't know. Like, you know, the thing is, like, to come on video and, like, make one, like, dedicated video talking about this stuff. Like, these are conversations I've been having for, like, over a year, you know, and a couple, like, year and a half at this point. Year, you know, it's not, like, these are not new things for me. <clears throat> And so, like, when I share this online, it's, like, it's a really sensitive topic, and I don't like talking about a lot of this. You know, it's, like, I, I said the other day in a vlog, and I said, I, I again said, um, this is where, like, I'm not offended, but I don't understand why people don't get it, you know? And, like, I said in the vlog, literally on that vlog, was addressing this person's last comment that they had said why don't you reach out to the family and like I think that would be good for you to like do this and and you know all this kind of stuff and I was like I made it very very clear that was the second video that I made it very clear in that that was not my place to reach out to them that you know and that's also part of recovery when we make amends you know that we're willing to make direct amends to other people um but I'm not gonna reach out to somebody. I don't wanna disrupt their life. They may never wanna hear from me. They may not have any personal attachment to my name or, do you know what I mean? Like they may never need to have that conversation or wanna have that conversation. It's not about me, right? Like their loss is not, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, that's not my place to reach out to them. And yet this person left a third comment and said, well, I still think that it would do you really good to reach out to them and that you need to say this. And you need, so, you think, so you think you know what's best for me. No, I'm always trying to think about what's the right thing to do for somebody. I can tell you, I'll say this in this video today. I probably, if I get the comment again from that person, it's the same person that's left the comment like three times. If they leave it again, I probably just will block them because they don't get it. Like, and <laughs> I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, I've said it so many times in videos, like it's not my place to reach out to them, okay? I made it very clear. Like they, in, the, in the third comment they even said again, they said like, um, if you like, I know you're not open to this. And I'm like, I have said now three times, like I'm very open to this, right? Like if they ask me to have a conversation, I'm not really sure what that conversation would look like. They, they have all the facts, I know all the facts. You know, if they want to have that conversation, I'm totally open to it. I've ha I've already talked to my therapist about it. I've talked to my sponsor about it. I've talked to Alex about it, you know, of, of the willingness to have that conversation. But for people to continue to push and push and push and be like, what you need to do, what you need to do, what you need to do, what you need to do is, like, for me, it's like, that's not my place. It's not my place, you know? It's not my place to control somebody else's pain and what they do with it. I'm trying to do the best that I can do. I don't even know if those people have any clue that I'm not driving again. You know, that's not really what it's about to me. I don't know, you know? All I know is that me sitting here and not driving lets me know that I am no longer, you know, like in a position where somebody can get hurt by me driving in a car again, period, you know? 
So, um, I feel right about that decision, you know? That all stemmed off of that one comment that I got. I guess I'd call this video addressing comments. <laughs> addressing deep comments, that's what I'll call it. But yeah, I feel like there's so many like conversations and things I've dealt with in the last year and a half. And I think that like me right now, coming up on this two year mark of where I just like, I feel like for so long I heard two years, two years, two years, two years, which is so weird because like a lot of these things, like we talked about like two years, like the brain bleed, like that was over like a year ago, right? And then like other things with like my back, well that didn't take any, like a year or two, you know, at all. And, um, and then like other things, you know, medical things that were going on with me. I mean, I've had pancreatitis since the accident, <clears throat> but somehow I fixated on that two years. And so I think like, you know, I just can remember my doctors, like some of the things that we talked about at the beginning, some of their concerns were not, are not even things that I even had conversations with in like, let's say my last three appointments. You know, but like at that time, they're like, we're gonna monitor this for two years, you know, and things like that. This this medical issue or that medical issue, you know, like my, my blood pressure was like huge. I can remember they said two years, we're gonna monitor your blood pressure for two years. Well, what was it, six months ago or three months ago or something like that, that I got off the blood pressure medication and my blood pressure was good and I had lost a lot of weight and stuff like that. And there were just a lot of medical issues, you know? Um, and stuff like that at that time. So I keep on just in my head, I hear that. And I think that's part of like, this week, going into this week is really, like Alex and I were just talking about Valentine's Day tonight at dinner or at brunch. And he was like, babe, we don't have to do anything. We've got like, you know, Florida coming up in March. He was like, if you don't want to go do anything. Cause I was like, I'm really trying to be healthy. And like, it's going to be hard for me to go out to dinner and whatever. And I said, what I was thinking I could, we could do. He's like, well, we can just like watch a movie and you know, be romantical at home and things like that. Tra he trains like that. And he was like, you know, like, um, and I was like, okay, we can just like pick a movie to watch or something like that and light some candles and whatever. And I was like, I was thinking, you know, that you could make those salads. This is totally my husband, right? And I said that you can make those salads that you always make that are real healthy, you know? We could have those while we're watching a movie. And he goes, so you want me to work on Valentine's Day? <laughs> and I go, no. Or, you know, like, we can, um, uh, we can, like, order something in if you want to or whatever. And I started laughing. And I said, babe, I said, listen, I said, this week, I don't know why. I mean, I know why. I know it's because it's leading up to the anniversary of the accident. I feel like I'm I'm like on the on on this fence. I'm like I'm walking between like feeling completely anxious and feeling completely calm and I kind of go back and forth between both of them. And this week is like real tough for me and um and I feel like I just need to get through this week. I, 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 and you know what? It sounds so crazy to think that like like as of Saturday it's like, you know, I'll I don't know, like I don't really know how to explain it, you know, but um I don't, I don't even think it'll be after Saturday. I, I'm hoping like starting next week, like I'm not taking this week off from filming. I'm going to film videos and stuff, but Friday I'm taking off. I may take Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't know. Um, but I've got to like step, I've got this week, especially I have to like really learn how to like step into my new life. And um, I can't live post accident like it just happened for the next five or 10 years of my life. I just can't, you know? So I was telling Alex when we were talking about Valentine's Day, I was like, you know, this like, Valentine's Day is on Wednesday, the anniversary of the accident is on Friday. And I said like, you know, and then I'm doing my like trauma narrative on Thursday. And I said, this week is like gonna be real tough, you know, as far as like stuff to do with that. And he's like, babe, we don't have to do anything on Valentine's Day if you don't want to. And it's really fit. I'm usually the one that like, he's like, you know, I don't care. Cause I'm usually the one that pushes it and always wants to do stuff for Valentine's Day. So, I don't know, we'll just see how this weekend, how this week goes. Pray for me, I'm gonna need it this week. Um, I'm gonna need it this week. I just need to do a lot of reflecting this week. And then I think I need to do a lot of reflecting and a lot of like stepping in to my new life and then I have to do a lot of letting go and letting God. And that's what this week is really a lot about. So, let's talk about last night. <laughs> to get off all this seriousness for so long. Alex and I, we got caught up on all of our shows last night. We watched RuPaul's Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race Untucked, 
And then we watched, uh, I'm trying to look over there at her bag that her friend brought her. I think it's from Old Navy. Oh yeah, because it was like a big, do they have like new bags or something? I've been to Old Navy in so long, but it was like a big O in black and red and then a big N, which would be Old Navy. The only reason I knew it was Old Navy was because it had like a little thing that looked like it said Old Navy on it at the top. But anyway, um, RuPaul's Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, Untucked, we watched last night. Then we watched... Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, so boring this season. I am so over this season of Beverly Hills. They need to recast Beverly Hills, or Beverly Hills is just, it's done. It's so boring. Um, I think there's only like one or two episodes. I thought next week was the finale because they're filming the reunion of, well, they're, no, they're filming the reunion of Miami. Um, but I thought it was the, the finale of one of the shows next week, but it wasn't. And then Miami, we watched... Real Housewives of Miami, which I just say is interesting because, you know, they brought Real Housewives of Miami back, what was it, last year? Real Housewives of Miami is, like, 100 times better than Beverly Hills. And Beverly Hills, I just think it's, like, they either need to get new people on there or, and that Anne Marie, she was not it. They need to get rid of Crystal, okay? They need to get rid of Crystal, I don't know. I, I don't really know what they need to do. I don't really want to say who I think they need to get rid of. I just think, like, it's just, it's very just, like, blah, you know? And they don't really want to share anything online anymore. I mean, we've now delved into this world where the housewives got famous because they shared so much of their life online, now don't want to share anything on their line. And then their fans are protective of them and say they don't have to share anything online when they literally signed up to share their lives online, you know? It's like, uh, I don't get it, <laughs> in all honesty. It's like Kyle talking in the confessionals about problems her and Mauricio have been having for the whole season of the show that she's never talked about, right? And they've all speculated at, but she's like, I didn't want to talk about it on camera. Sweetheart, that's what you're here for. That's what you're doing. You're living your life on camera. That's what a real housewife is, right? Like, you don't hold things back. Like, we saw that on Vanderpump Rules, you know? And it's like, I don't know. I just... If you're not going to come and share your whole life, and I'm not saying that I don't understand how that's difficult, going through a separation or a divorce or whatever. Like, man, I've had many breakups that were hard, you know? My husband and I always thought that or not always, we thought for a while that we were going to get divorced before we got into, you know, counseling and stuff. And I think that um, to go through all of that online would have been extremely painful. But that's also part of what you signed up for. So that exit the show. Take yourself off the show, you know? And say, I don't, I don't want to be on the show anymore. I'm going through such difficult times. Or share your journey. Because now the show is just, meh, it's boring, right? And we signed up to get invested in these people's lives, not to get a cookie cutter, small version of their life. So Beverly Hills is boring to me. Miami is fantastic. Um, and then we watched Feud, the Sw uh, Truman Capote versus the Swans. We watched this week's episode, which was all about <coughs> this documentary that in 1966 was filmed. I mean, this is all part of the show, but it was like, him interacting with all these women that he's friends with. It's interesting that the portrayal of Truman Capote as just a really nasty human being, right? Like, as a really nasty human being. Um, I mean, I had heard a lot of things about Truman Capote through the years, but, like, you know, in, like, reading books or, like, articles and whatever, but, like, they really p paint a very nasty picture of Truman Capote. Uh, oh my god, have I been vlogging for almost an hour? There's no way. It's 4... four I can't see what time it says. 4... 4.20 something? 4.30 something? Anyway, um... But that, we watched that. That was very good. And then Alex went to bed. And then I watched The Bachelor from this week. I just had to kind of, like, look through stuff on my phone. I'm kind of bored of it, to be honest with you. But I'm gonna keep on watching it. I think Caroline's watching it, too, right now. Tanya's watching it. Um, I mean, I kind of want to keep up with Bachelor Nation <laughs> just because I like being part of Bachelor Nation. But the Bachelor, well, first of all, there was drama this week. Um, so that made it kind of fun. I wonder, like, in watching The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, like, because they, you know, they pick so many women at the end of the night, or he picks so many women, gives them roses. I'm wondering, like, how many production picks and how many he picks. Because I have to believe that some of it is, like, for, like, they pick things or have storylines going on for television and things like that. Um, 
But anyway, I watched The Bachelor. It wasn't bad. I mean, it was good enough that it was going to keep me watching. But the thing is, is that I, got, I was so proud of myself that I watched all hour and 25 minutes of it. I was like, God, I made it through finally, right? And then at the very end, it goes, next week on The Bachelor, a double Bachelor week. And I was like, what? And they're like, Monday night and Tuesday night. I was like, oh, shit. I got two nights of The Bachelor next week. Now, you know that's when you should probably end a TV show, right? It's like when there's two episodes coming out of a show that you're watching and you're not even excited about it. That's probably when you should, like, end that show, right? And then I have to be honest with you, like, I was not really that excited. I'd watched two episodes of Behind Her Eyes, and I had three, four, five, and six, so I had four episodes left to watch. And I wasn't super excited about watching it because I didn't love the first two episodes. What's so interesting about this is that I read the book years ago, and I can remember when I read the book just like telling everybody they needed to read this book, but I didn't remember why. Like, I read it around the same time that I read Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, and I can remember those two books together. I would tell everybody, I'd be like, oh my God, you need to read this book. This book is so good, blah, 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 whatever. I remembered it was something about the end and a well, but I couldn't remember what. So anyway, last night I was going to start watching The Murder at the End of the World, which is on Hulu, or I was going to watch Stay Close. I was like, no, just finish this behind your eyes. You already started it. It's, it's totally boring. It's a bore ass, but just finish it anyway, right? And so, um... Like, you know when you don't know, like, if you, if you want to, like, you know, finish watching. Somebody said to me yesterday in the comment section, they said, I love when you say you instead of you guys because then it feels like you're just talking to me. I honestly just feel like I'm talking to one person right now when I'm having this conversation. It really just feels like somebody's sitting. I mean, literally, like, my, uh, my chair's right there. I just feel like you're, like, sitting right in my chair talking to me. <laughs> I should have set the camera in the chair. Oh, my God, just have conversations with an empty chair. <laughs> I'm sure a therapist could do something with that. But anyway, um... But anyway, like, you know, like, when you're, like, in a show, but you like, you don't want to finish it because it's so boring, but, like, The Bachelor. <laughs> but you're like, no, I'm like, all right, like, like a book that you're halfway through, but you don't want to finish it because you're, you know, so bored of it, but that you have to kind of find out what happened. You've already invested so much time in it. It's kind of like that. And, um... <laughs> It's like when you put so much money in a slot machine, but you can't get up from it and walk away because you put so much money in it. And you know the next person that sits down is going to hit the jackpot. It's kind of like that, right? So I was like, no, just finish the show. Just watch the show. And I think somebody commented on my vlog, like, as I was making a decision. I think I looked in the comments on my vlog, and somebody said, oh, I loved Behind Her Eyes. And so I was like, oh, okay, I'll watch into this. Y'all, I'm telling you right now, it's a hard pass on this show. Don't do it, Okay. <laughs> It is five and a half episodes of the most boring shit you've ever seen in your entire life, okay? I can't, I don't, I feel like the book was so different than the movie. Now, the very end of the movie, or the show, I totally remember now, okay? It's not even really a mystery thriller. It's, I don't know what you would call it, kind of science fiction-y at the end, I guess. I don't even really know. I don't want to ruin it for anybody in case they, like, they want to read the book or watch the show or whatever. I'll just tell you right now, I just was, like, as soon as it happened in the show, it's a lot about dreams and stuff like that. As soon as it started happening in the show, I remembered the ending immediately. I was like, oh, now I remember what happens. And so, like, but it would, even if I didn't know that, it... First of all, it didn't end the way that I wanted it to, okay, which most shows don't, so that's okay. But it just ended, it just was, I don't know, I just was not into it. It was boring. But anyway, so I finished that. So tonight, I'm going to either watch The Murder at the End of the World, or I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, watch Stay Close on Netflix. I'm not sure which one yet. That being said, let's talk about before that. So... Did Peter walk? Did Peter not walk? Peter walked last night. I did. I walked for a, most time ever, an hour and 17 minutes. Can you believe it? I was so proud of myself. And I listened to my audiobook the whole time. So I'm listening to Redwood Court right now, which is Reese's Book Club um, for February. And I have two hours and 11 minutes of it left. And it's, it's really good. It's, okay, not a lot happens. So it's about this it's not the history of this black family that grew up, like, originated, like, great-grandparents from Georgia, and then they moved to Columbia, South Carolina, and then they have, like, family in Charlotte and things like that, but it's about this, the grandparents, or the great-grandparents to the grandparents to the grandparents to the parents, and then it's about this girl named Mika, and she's the granddaughter of, um, her, 
of her grandparents that live on Redward Court. And so at the time that the book's taking place, she's like 13 or 14 years old. And it's a lot about like, oh my God, I have not seen her in forever. That's the woman who has a dog named Lassie. That's Lassie right there that's pulling her down the street. I haven't seen her in forever. She can't hear very well. So unless she looks over here, I won't get a wave to her or anything like that. And she doesn't look over here. Um, it's interesting from like a historical point of view. So the whole book starts with Mika is supposed to do a class project on like a family kind of like tree kind of thing. And so she's asking her grandfather where um, like her family tree. And so he's telling her about all these names and stories and whatever. And then she's supposed to come up with like a family artifact or something. Like, they keep, they're going to go back to it at the end of the book, so they're going to explain it more. Because they're going to, like, not at the end of the book, but, like, half, like, halfway mark and then catch up and go from there. Because you can tell it's, like, we're, we're getting close to that right now. And so it's really about her discovering, like, like, she asked her grandparents, like, like, what part of Africa are we from? Or something like that. And her, or her, I think she says it to her one grandfather. And, like, she needs, like, an artifact or something. She's, like, because we're African-American or whatever. And he, she even talks about the words that he uses to define himself and things like that and he says take in my Texas belt buckle because I'm as American as the rest of them and I'm from Texas and so it's her really trying to uh, understand how she identifies per the definition of what's this, how society defines her when people you know told her parents here they are let's see if she when she weighs when she walks by she's not even looking up or anything at me like, there's a scene, like, with her parents, like, when she's very young, and they're, like, going to Disney World. And this is, like, in the early 80s. And, like, they're at this gas station in, like, Alabama or somewhere, and this guy says to them, you need to go back to where you came from. And her mom rolls down the window and says, we're more American than you. And so it's this whole idea of, like, how does she identify herself through the, the history of her family and how does, like, white society... Um, identify her and things like that. It's very interesting. Like, when you go in there and you read the synopsis about it, it's like, she grows up in this house where they listen to Motown when she wants to listen to her Alanis Morissette cassettes and her trying to identify, like, who she is in this new world and all this kind of stuff. And so, her grandparents live on this cul-de-sac called Redwood Court, and that's where it takes place. And, um, so it just kind of, like, goes through the years it's fantastically done. But I will say this, like I enjoy listening to it because I love stories about characters. I love storytelling. I don't need some huge explosion of an event to happen. I like that in books sometimes, but I could just listen to like 10 hours of a story, right? It is all stories. It's like talking about like sickness and health and moving and this person dying and a backyard barbecue and they're doing a fundraiser for somebody in the street that can't pay their mortgage. It's all that kind of stuff. Pregnancies and divorces. It's not like, it's about this girl figuring out who she is in this world. And it's not like a, a book where you're going to have a huge climax or anything like that. Um, so if you're looking for that, this is probably not the book for you, but it is beautifully, beautifully written. This woman, actually, the author got her MFA in poetry, I think from like, um, oh, from, she got her, I think from the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, which is, wherever she got it from is where one of my favorite authors of life, Jill McCorkle, is from. I just looked this up last night. She got her MFA from... Hold on a second. I just, literally was just looking this up last night. I'm looking it up on Goodreads. My Goodreads loads so slow, you guys. Did yours do that? Redwood Court. Here it is. Redwood Court. This is what it looks like. And it is by Delana R.A. Dameron. And it says... is an artist whose primary medium is storytelling. She's a graduate of New York University's MFA program in poetry and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in history from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. That's it. Her deba debut poetry collection, How God Incest, was selected by... So go ahead and see her and talks about all this kind of stuff. She's also the founder of Salama Acres, an equestrian and cultural space in her hometown of South Carolina where she resides. 
So anyway, it's fantastic. And then I think that's one of the reasons why I want to take my walk today is because I want to listen to more of that and really get into it. But then I also think that like after I um, finish that, I'm going to listen to the Mandy Matney book. And then I'll have both of the February book club books done because that's the book for True Crime Book Club is the Mandy Matney Blood on Our Hands about the Murdoch murder. And uh, so then I'm going to read that book. I don't even actually know how long that book is. This book is actually, this isn't like long, long, but it's longer than most of the books that I read. Blood on Their Hands is 10 hours and 37 minutes. So that'll probably be the next one that I listen to. And then it'll be thrillers, thrillers, thrillers for the rest of the month. February thrillers. Um, so yeah, so listening to that, listen to that last night. I listened to like an hour. I think I listened to like an hour and 15 minutes or 20 minutes. I can't remember how long of that last night. But I, well, I started listening to music as I walked last night for like 10 minutes. And then I turned on my audiobook and listened to that until I walked. Then came home and so kept to my diet last night. I was very proud of myself. Ate my two meals and my peanut butter sandwich. Ate or drank two and a half huge Stanley cups of water. I've been like really doing good on the water. I'm very proud of myself for that. And then we went to brunch today. And I have to tell you, so like three o'clock in the morning last night, I got so hungry. I was like, tomorrow is my cheat day and I'm eating anything that I want. And Alex had even said to me last night because I was telling him I was making my grocery list. Y'all want to know what my grocery list is? Oh, I was going to tell you guys this. Um, I think I told you about the meals yesterday, didn't I? The two, the Gardein bowls that I like and the Daring bowls that I like. So here's my grocery list. Daring meals, Gardein meals. Gardein has a gumbo, a sausage, a fake sausage, plant-based sausage gumbo that I want. Gardein soup. They have several different kinds of soup. I need to get more peanut butter. But somebody said something to me about, I think it was on the, the vlog, they said about the great, uh, I wanted to do this for a while anyway, but they said like all the great health uh, things that come along with almond butter. And so um, I'm going to look up like the best kind of almond butter today online. So thank you for the recommendations. See, I do take some of the recommendations and um, I'm going to get almond butter and then I'm going to get more whole wheat bread. And then they have these like yogurt smoothies. I need to eat something for breakfast so that like I'm not so hungry by the time I eat dinner. I need to start eating uh, several small meals a day. And so... Like I told, I just told Alex at lunch, like I want to go from like, I vlogged a lot longer than I thought I did. The camera's at 30 minutes again. Um, I want to stop from eating two meals and a peanut butter sandwich to one meal and a peanut butter sandwich. So I'm going to like this week, that's one of my goals. Um, but they have these like, I can't remember what the brand is. It's a yogurt brand, but they have these smoothies. So you just like shake and then like keep them in the fridge and you just like open them and they're like yogurt smoothies and they're pretty like low cal and stuff. So I'm going to get those. I'm going to get some yogurt. Um... I'm going to get some Diet Dr. Pepper. I am going to allow myself to have Diet Dr. Pepper. And then the little cherry tomatoes. I love those. I'm going to get cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, celery, and vinegar. And I'm going to make like a little salad like to keep in like a, you know, Tupperware container. My mom used to make cucumbers and have them in, um, that's all on my list. And she would have them on, um, in a Tupperware container, like a bowl in the refrigerator with vinegar when I was growing up as a kid as a snack. And um, so last night at like three o'clock in the morning, I was so hungry. I was like, go make yourself a peanut butter sandwich or go do this. I was like, I even looked to see if there was cheese in the refrigerator that Alex had, which there was, but I was like, no. And then I was like, no, you're gonna be so proud of yourself if you make it through tonight and you don't snack late at night, right? Which I was when I woke up today. So I was like, I'm not gonna eat anything tonight, whatever, and I made it through last night, but I was like, I've gotta have stuff here in case like I'm hungry late at night, but I've gotta have stuff that's, that's you know, healthy. And so I'm gonna get like onions, and then like, I'm just gonna make like a little like, you know, like what do you, like, <laughs> I don't even know what that's called, but vinegar with like cucumbers, celery, tomatoes, like cherry tomatoes, and like some on onions for spice in there and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and just, have that, you know, and then I can like just dip in there because I like love cucumbers and tomatoes. I just do. So that'll be a little bit healthier for me. And um, as like a late night snack. I know there's probably something wrong with that, right? Too much sodium. Vinegar's bad for you. I don't know what. <laughs> it's healthier than a Big Mac. All That's all I know. <laughs> God, I haven't had a Big Mac in forever. Do you remember when I was saying like on here that I was like so hungry for like a Big Mac and people were like, just go through and get a Big Mac with no patty. Do you know how many times I thought about that? Because so many people recommended that. They're like, just go through, with, you know, okay, <laughs> get a Big Mac with no, no patty on it. Just the, you know, I have so many times thought about that. Um, 
And my friend Val Arini was here right now. She would laugh because when we used to go to the casino, I'd be like, oh my God, people on the vlog tell me that. Because um, Val Valerie actually does watch the vlog. She'd be like, uh, I would say, people say that I should go through McDonald's. And so like on our way home, I'd be like, pull through McDonald's. But then we'd go through McDonald's and I'd be closed. Or like, you know, they wouldn't be serving Big Macs, just breakfast food or something like that. So anyway, okay, we went to brunch today. And um, Alex got a cup instead of a bowl of chili, turkey chili. I always keep on thinking he gets his soup, but now that they have turkey chili, he's been getting his turkey chili because he loves that. So we got a, a cup instead of a bowl because he's been getting so hungry in his turkey chili that he hasn't been eating his Cuban. <laughs> so somebody left kind of a funny joke when I said that Alex brought his Cuban home to eat. From last, they said, oh, that, something like that. Anyway, you know. But um, a couple of you have some dirty senses of humor, I'll just say that. But, um, so, uh, so then Alex got his cube and he ate just a little bit of it. And then I said, just, just don't force yourself. Just like bring it home. Right. And I got, um, a, the California dreamer omelet with no jalapenos, add horseradish with a side of Dijon mustard. And I got a side of ketchup too. And then I did have an everything bagel toasted with melting melted butter, but they didn't melt the butter. They brought the butter out to me on the side and cream cheese. And I ate like half the bagel. And I was like, I was so hungry last night. I was like, I'm eating everything and I'm getting a piece of cake to take home with me and I'm getting snacks for tomorrow night. And oh, and The Bachelor, they ordered for the pool party, they ordered Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I was like, and I'm getting, I'm gonna like DoorDash, Kentucky Fried Chicken, macaroni and cheese and fries tomorrow night. I was like, I'm going all in, right? And today I just wasn't feeling it. Like we went to brunch, I wasn't even that hungry. And so I was like finishing up. I was like, if you don't eat all this, like you don't know that you're going to have a good meal like this in a while. I was like, you don't need to finish it. I was so proud of myself. I didn't even finish all my stuff. Just kind of like stacked it up. I was like, you're done. You're full. You're done. Don't eat any more, right? So it was a real win for me of going out. I will say one thing. Somebody left a comment. Like, I do want you guys to know that like... The comments that you guys list, leave me, like, I read all the comments, right, mostly. And so when you leave... Mostly. No, I do. But, like, when you guys leave me the comments, like... I, I, like, if there's suggestions, like, I read them and I'm like, yeah, that's for me, or no, that's not. Like, that's kind of how it is. Like, anybody in life, when somebody gives you a suggestion, right? But, like, somebody suggested to me and they said, and this wasn't the first time that I had heard it, but, like, this was the first time this week that I would heard it. So, I, it was, like, you know, present on my mind. They said, when you, when I go somewhere, like, I order a full meal, but then, like, as soon as I order, I ask for a box, like, to come out at the same time. And then I take half of it, I put it in the box to take home, and then I just eat half of my meal. And I'm like, oh. That is so smart. I'm not big on on um, take-home meals, like, just because then I have that stuff sitting at home. And I know it's a waste of food, but then it's sitting at home, and then I'm going to want to eat it. And I'm not the kind of person that will have a meal the next day. I'm the kind of person that will eat that, like, a half an hour after I get home or that night. Like, I really struggle with that. But I actually think that's not a bad idea um, when I go somewhere. Like, an omelet's hard to take home. You know, like, salads, I don't think, like, carry well. I know some people think they do. I don't. But I actually think, like, that's not a bad idea if I get, like, a get, like, you know, some kind of sandwich or something to just, like, cut it in half, put half of it in a box right away, and then just enjoy my meal. I think that's a fantastic idea. So whoever said that, I want to say thank you for that recommendation. You guys are giving me a lot of recommendations, and I just want to say this, on top of talking about all these other comments, that the support and the amount of encouragement, especially when I was talking about, like, I felt like I was successful, you know, even in just walking and whatever, it feels so corny to be like, I'm so proud of myself for walking, but I am, you know, and... This is more activity than I've done in the last two years, you know? Like, actually, it was funny because Alex last night, he was like, you know, you can look on your phone and see how many steps you, you took. And I was like, you can? And he was like, yeah. And so I, like, looked, and my steps were the same. And I was like, what was, like, such and such date? And I was like, why did I have so many steps on that date? And it was the day that we um, came back from Mexico, and we were, like, you know, walking all over the place, the airports, and on and on and on. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so funny, because, like, that day I feel like we walked so much. And then last night, like, you know, whatever, walking, like, I walked just as much. So I think... Not a lot compared to some people. I know if I say this, I think I walked something like 9,800 uh, steps yesterday or something like that per my per my iPhone. I know when I say that, people will be like, Peter, I walk 20,000 steps every day or something like that. I don't know what's a good amount of steps. All I know is that when I'm pretty sedentary, when I was looking throughout the week, it's like 1,500 to 2,000 steps. So I would like my goal to maybe be like 10,000, but does the steps mean anything? Oh, by the way, I wanted to ask this question on here. I do want suggestions on this. I'm thinking about getting some like wrist and ankle weights for when I walk 
Did I say this yesterday in yesterday's vlog? I don't know if I did. If anybody has any good suggestions of a brand or on Amazon, you know, if you guys have bought them and you like them, of like good like ankle and wrist weights, I just think that would be like an extra way for me to get in um, a little bit more like weight training in my exercise and stuff like that. I know it sounds corny. <laughs> Make, I, when I looked them up, I was like, this makes me feel like uh, Jane Fonda aerobics. <laughs> what was the one, the low impact that I loved, you know, circa 1987 or something like that. But I felt like, okay, Okay, well, I'm like, I think I saw somebody that had them. They were like doing like this and they had the holding one. So I was like, well, don't they have the ones for the wrist or whatever? And I was like, I think I could do that, you know, and it'd be good for me, like for my legs and stuff like that. So anyway, feeling very inspired and I'm very hopeful for this week ahead and that this week ahead will be a week of healing. Um, and I'm very hopeful for that. So, um, so yeah, God, I vlogged for a lot longer than I thought I was going to. Anyway, I'm going to get off here now. I hope that you guys are having fun watching the Super Bowl, your Super Bowl parties, whatever you're doing. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I could care less, honestly. <laughs> and uh, it's a super talk Sunday for me. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh. Don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face. You might be changing their day for the better. You might be making them feel not so all alone. And you might be making them happier. You don't know. Also, be kinder to one another. Love one another a little bit more. And most importantly, be kinder to yourself and love yourself a little bit more. Because if you're kinder to yourself, well, it just feels good, first of all. <laughs> I mean, that's mostly it, right? But then you'll also be kinder to others. And if you love yourself more, that feels good too. And then uh, you'll also love others more as well. And I know sometimes it's a really difficult thing to love ourselves. You know, it took me a long time to get there. Um, but I'm there today. And uh, I think I needed to hear that. Because where I went in my head was, if you love yourself, allow yourself to step into this new phase of your life to allow yourself to love yourself. Because then you'll love others more as well. And I love you guys so much, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.